So we've looked at variables and the need to declare them to store information of a particular type, but sometimes there's a need to um, change types or convert between types, particularly for display purposes. So let's have a look at uh, how you go about that. So let's first of all, let's, uh, convert, let's create some variables. So let's say dim i as integer. So I haven't got very meaningful names here, but the letters are going to remind me what they do. Um, so s uh, as a string. And then we'll have uh, f, a floating point, uh, which is, uh, we'll call that a single in Visual Basic. And we can give each of those a value. So i equals uh, 1, 2, 3, for example. And then we can say s equals, well, what we can do is, obviously, we can set it to a value. But what about if we've got that um, 1, 2, 3, and we want to convert it into a string well there's a command str and we can say we'll have the string version of i please and what that'll do is that i'll convert that into i and then we can say f equals um well so we've got int um, which will convert uh, things to an integer so it'll round them off if it's a floating point number but it will also try and convert a string uh, to an integer where possible so we'll have a look at um, different ways uh, around of doing that so um, and then we can say there's a if you want to convert any other types there is a convert um, kind, of, kind of keyword and then you can say convert dot and then to whatever type you want to convert it to. So if I can, I can say convert to single, um, let's try and convert S to a single. So S is a string at the moment, remember? Um, and what I'll do now is I'll, I'll display those. So I'll say console, oh, no, console dot uh, right line. And what I'm going to do is we want to say what S is. So S so I'm going to use these uh, placeholders, so that'll be 0, and then we'll have uh, i, which will make uh, 1, and then we'll have um, f, which is our floating point number, or our single, um, as 2, and then we'll have s, i, and f. So that will print those uh, as the output to the program. So let's run that and see what that does. So we're starting off with 123. We're converting it to a string, and then we're converting it to a single. So let's see uh, if that works, if it complains about that, or if it's happy with it. So I can press Control F5 to compile that. And there we go. So S is 123, I is also 123, and F is 123. So that's converted between them uh, without any error. Uh, obviously, if I start, if I swap these around now, so if I say um, make S a, a letter, and then obviously you need to change the order here. So if I now say I is the integer version of S, caps lock on there there we go um, see what that does so so it doesn't like that because some conversions aren't possible um, because obviously we can't convert uh, the letter a into a number but look at this so if I if I use a string that converts uh, or, or contains sorry a number um, let's have a look at that so it can cope with that. So it can it can cope with converting um, a string containing a number into a number. So that seems to work okay. Uh, what, we, what we can do, and if we want to check whether that uh, has actually worked, then we can um, use, there's a type name um, function. So if we say console.writeline, and obviously this will work for any variable. Um, so type name. If we say type name uh, s, for example, uh, what that will do is that will tell us what type of variable s is. So it tells us there that it is still a string, even though it looks like a number. So unlike some other languages like Python, when you print the value of a variable, it doesn't put the speech marks um, around it. So a little bit redundant in Visual Basic, obviously, because we've had to declare the variable at the top. We know what type it is. Um, what about this? Let's have a look at this. What do you think that'll do? 
So, um, well, that will work, won't it? So, but what about if we do, um, what about if we do that? Because this, this will work because we've converted the, um, the string to a number first and then we've added one. But what will that do? So let's uh, run that and have a look. So surprisingly, that's actually worked. So you can add one to a string and it'll, it'll cope. So some types of conversion are done explicitly. Uh, so you might think, well, hang on, has that turned S into a number? But if we have a look at, uh, so if we do console dot right line type name S. So we have a look at what type S is. S is still a string, even though we've managed to add one to it. So although it might seem slightly unfriendly if you've come from other languages like Python or um, JavaScript, which isn't really typed, um, that you know types of variables are fixed, actually it is a little bit flexible in that sense that you can take a string and add one to it, which um, is a little bit unexpected. Now because, um, also because Visual Basic uses different symbols for adding and concatenation, unlike other languages like Python and JavaScript. So Python and JavaScript, if you want to add two strings together, you use plus. But in um, Visual Basic, uh, ampersand will add together two strings. So what will this do? Let's have a look. So I'm going to get rid of that line now, and I'm just going to... Um, well, in fact, I'll leave that there. So I'm going to run this program now. So it's one, two, three ampersand one. So what we'd imagine that would do is it would concatenate strings together, but one isn't a string, is it? So let's see how, if that works. And in fact, that's worked as well, because there's uh, an implicit conversion. So when we um, use plus, it converted one, two, three from a string into an integer, added the one, and then turned it back into a string. But now we're using ampersand to concatenate a string and an integer and it's doing it so th there are some implicit uh, types of conversion so that's quite um, and it's a little bit more friendly uh, than you might expect and that's quite useful when you're um, joining strings together so for example if we wanted rather than using um, these kind of placeholders in the string there if I wanted to join it all together using just ampersands so I could say something like uh, the value of I is And then I could just use ampersand and do that because that that's um, obviously a, a text and that is a number, but it's coped. It's managed to join those things to two things together, which wouldn't work in some other languages like such as Python. So that's how to convert between different types. It's a little bit more flexible than you might imagine. So we've got int and str to convert to an integer and to a um, string value. Um, but we've also got convert dot, and then we can convert to all the other different types as well. And um, But some conversions are done implicitly. So we can concatenate a number without having to cast it to a string. And it also appears we can um, add, in an, in an arithmetic way, um, an integer to a string, and it will cope with that as well.